And welcome to another episode of Elastic Bytes. Today we're continuing this series going over little bits of how Elasticsearch works and building out a project together. Today's topic is going over Eland and how to use machine learning in Elastic to enrich your data and do some really cool stuff. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, I'll start by bringing up over here, we'll mostly be working from my Visual Studio code environment. If you're a data scientist or looking to do any data science, it's most likely that you work with Python. So I'll be showing you how the Python client for Elastic works, or shall I say clients, as we have multiple. Um, basically, what we do is we can install all our requirements and our different types of plugins that we use in here, and we can connect to Elasticsearch. So the same environment that you've seen in the previous episodes, this is how we connect to that engine kind of behind the scenes, and we don't really have to go to the browser interface anymore. We can do the same requests just from our code. So what we can do is we can index our data. We'll be working with the same indexes that we've seen in the previous episodes. If you've missed those, basically we're working with um, a lot of discuss uh, search results. So I'll show you that in a second. Basically we have this um, interface where people ask questions about Elastic and we answer them. And then we get a lot of text and a lot of uh, pretty rich data from that. So we've created an index from it and we're going to be working with it. Uh, what you see here is we have these helpers that help us index a really large amount of data really quickly. So there are some supporting tools when you work with Python. Uh, we also have an Elasticsearch DSL client, which has more complex functions that are usable from Python as well, but we'll keep it a bit simple today. Basically, yeah, we have the, the client connected. So when we do a search, uh, if you remember from the previous episodes, it's the same as doing this. So if we run a search in our dev console and we get all these results, we can do that just from one line of Python code. But since we're in Python, we have the advantage that we can process the results and make them look a bit more readable. What we can also do, especially if you want to do data science, is get the results in the form of a data frame. And this is actually an Eland data frame. And Eland is the machine learning and data frame um, client that we use with Elastic, this one. So basically we can just install it. And then as you see in here, we can have our own data frames that are based on Pandas data frames. So you can ex explore all the data in your index like this, and then you can do some really cool stuff with it. We can get some analysis going. So just initially get some information about that data frame and how it's stored into Elastic. So this one is optimized to work with Elasticsearch, of course. And then we can do data analysis on it. So you can do anything you can do in Pandas. You can more or less do with the Elan data frame. You can use Matplotlib or NumPy or any other data science tools to create nice stuff. But more importantly, you can do machine learning. So what we want to do is on this data set that I've mentioned, we can create a training set, we can train a model, fit it to that data, and then predict new stuff. We can do that by creating our data sets, um, just doing some really simple data processing here, taking all the numeric uh, columns that we have in our data set, which don't make a lot of sense for a machine learning model in this example, but I'm just wanted to show you on our data that it can work and it integrates really well. So if we take all these um, features and say we want to target what kind of topic is um, the question that was asked, we have some dumb encodings dumb in here. So we can use a classifier and then we can simply import it uh, using Eland. So this is how the classifier works. This is a very simple example of an XGBoost model. You can see we just fit the data and then we make predictions. Um, there are a lot of models that are supported in Eland. Uh, the full list you can see over here. So with this uh, model import, you can take a lot of stuff from scikit-learn, from um, LightGPM, XGBoost. There's mostly regression and classification, uh, and you can import those really simply like this, just add it to your Elasticsearch cluster. So the train model will be saved in there, and then you can make calls to it really easily like this. So we're doing the same prediction, just in simple Python, and this one using the model that's been registered into Elasticsearch. And you see that it works. Uh, but this is not the flashy stuff. The really nice stuff is when we start using NLP, which is natural language processing. Um, Elasticsearch, using the search, does a lot of stuff with semantic, with synonyms, with uh, looking through text. So it's really interesting to see how we can enrich that with machine learning as well. 
So now I'm taking the question text columns that we were using in our data set, cleaning them up a bit so they kind of look like this. And then we can apply different NLP models to it and use it in our search later on, as we'll see in the later episodes as well. So if we take this and we format it in the right uh, format, so when you make um, these requests to Elastic, you mostly use JSONs. So we have each row is one of these requests that we'll send in. So we have question, answer, question, answer, and we want to use this with an NLP model. Now, there are different NLP models that are supported by Elastic. We've seen before that classification and regression, you just import the models. For NLP, it's a little more complex. You basically have to run um, a Docker engine for them. This is the easiest way to do it. You can also import it, but then you have to uh, mess around with the different versions. Uh, we have our own Docker image that was published actually a few days ago. So you can just pull that and run it by doing this in your terminal. And then you can get the model ID of the models that are supported. Again, we support quite a few NLP models for different tasks like BERT, which we'll be using today. You can do entity recognition. You can do uh, embeddings, which we'll see in the next few days. But for now, I'm just playing around with a bit of sentiment analysis. So basically, I'll get the model. I'll get the train model. We'll register it into Elastic like before. And then we can just make a call to get some results. So here, I just did like 10 lines. And we have the text, the, po the probability um, of what the sentiment is, positive or negative and a score of how sure my model is that that's the right answer. So you can get some really nice insights into were people happy with their questions or their answers or not. And then we can use this to go through our data and search in more complex ways. So in order to do this, we can, like you see here, you know, try to model out on a few requests at a time, or we can actually create a pipeline, which you've probably seen before, where we say, hey, I have this model ID and I want to map it to these specific fields, and I want to apply it to everything. So you can run this uh, in your engine. I think I have it saved here. Create this pipeline uh, and make it re-index your data, adding this sentiment analysis to all the fields that you've mentioned. So then your um, index will contain that information in there as well. So you can add that to your search. Um, Speaking of, we'll see that tomorrow in the next few days that when you have these complex models, you can bring them in and um, you can do semantic search based on those embeddings. So make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel or to all the places where this is available to see the next episode of our Elastic Bytes. Hope you've enjoyed this and learned a bit about how to use models and data science in Elastic. Thank you for watching. <laughs>